well there's our front transmission belt and there's where it broke so yeah it's uh it's flexing and banging around it's uh <laughs> definitely not doing what it's supposed to do so i did a little shopping around trying to find this mount for the type 3 and everything that i found was mismatched according to what year it was supposed to be on what car. It was just extremely unclear, but after looking around and finding some other things, I discovered that 68 is a special year, that it uses the later IRS transmission mount. The IRS transmission and suspension didn't start until 1969, but 1968 was the last year for the swing axle, but it still used the same mount as the later models, so after looking it up, I discovered the part is about $169, and there's about a two-week wait to get one. I don't think so. I can get a beetle mount for about 20 bucks, and a good quality one. And I think with an adapter I can get that bolted in, it should work just fine. So that's what I set out to do. Alright, here we have the piece. And I'm going to use to make the adapter. My cheap ass Harbor Freight Sawzall. Always gets the job done. And that's one stud out. Not bad. Repeat on the other side. Alright, here is the mount, the front transmission mount that belonged on the floor pan of a uh, late model Beetle. This is the front transmission nose cone mount, the uh, actual rubber piece, and this goes in there like that. As you saw previously, it had two studs on it. I went and drilled them out. And I'm going to be making a piece, a couple of barrels. I'll cut this right down the middle here, drill out a hole, weld these suckers in here. And using bolts instead of permanent studs, I should be able to recreate this mount, which has been uh, rare and hard to find and expensive and a real pain in the balls to remove. So my goal is to uh, essentially duplicate what we've got here. And the beautiful thing is I can slide the bolts out and then this will all just come apart inside the, uh, the vehicle. So if I ever have to change this out again, I can get a really easy to find part for less than $20 instead of spending $160 on one of these and it can all be removed fairly easily. I can also get one of the Rhino mounts which uh, are super durable and not known for splitting but they're only available for a type 1 configuration and uh, using this adapter that I'll be putting together here it will also fit a Rhino mount. That was really the goal because I don't like changing these things it's just a real pain in the ass and this is just way over engineered this should have been two pieces this piece and then one of these to go on here and it would have been nice if these were uh, bolts instead of studs that they could have actually just slid in instead you have to actually spread the transmission that far from here to here towards the back of the vehicle to be able to pull this thing out whereas if this were bolts of course then this piece would just fall out <laughs> and this can go forward and you only have to spread out you know less than an inch and you can pull this thing out well anyway that's my thought I'll be beating on this a little more and over here we've got my type 3 fastback you see the motor's been pulled I've been laying down pieces of plywood so that way I can pull the cart back with the engine on it so I can get into the work position here's a piece of the plywood just like that and I can slide the motor out uh, inside here you can see the transmission the bell housing there's a rag that I put there. I don't know why, but I did. Right now I've got the uh, motor mount out. It's just a little piece of wood 
underneath the bottom of the transmission stopping it from falling down not that it's really too big of a concern because those axles that are attached to it will stop from falling any further also the nose cone is still pushed in the chassis so it's still holding up the front so really it's not going to go anywhere but this is the uh, bottom of the transmission mount and the rubber pieces go in here like this and then they bolt up through the bell housing inside the transmission so I have to put that back together yet and then you put the big bolts through here which go into the frame horns on either side of the transmission I've got that all pulled apart this took about about 90 minutes uh, I've done it before and I made a few modifications that made the job a whole lot easier uh, one of which which is really obvious I turned this bolt around backwards that uh, stud was part of the engine case, which, I don't know, that was like the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. I've never seen an engine with a stud on top. So I turned it around the other way, so that way the nut is on this side. So when you go to remove the engine, you can just take the nuts off on the top, you know, no mess, no stress, and take the two nuts out on the bottom and the motor just comes out. You don't have to try to reach up and around, around the uh, transmission um, clutch wing nut, which is normally here. You just, you can't get a tool in there. It's, it was really a stupid design. Why they didn't just make the nut on the inside of the engine compartment here like like I've got it now is anybody's guess. But uh, that's what I've done there. I'm going to finish making up my transmission adapter and get the sucker bolted all together. And we should be able to drive this car again. So if you get a good look at the rear transmission mounts here, you can see that they're all bowed out. Just stretched flat. This one is actually one of the better ones. This one was worse. You can actually see it's gooey. The rubber actually turned to mush and uh, there's actually a piece missing from it so I think something was vibrating against it as it expanded it it hit something probably the bell housing or something on the outside it was just rubbing against it. maybe even the engine but uh, I bent that down that didn't come out that way I had to do that to get the bolt out of it as the rubber had expanded so much that I couldn't put the bolt in you see the bolt hole there is, is free you know and this one is right up against the rubber so anyway this is the replacement part that's going in and you can see the difference it looks so much smaller because it's not all squished and this of course is the front nose cone mount for the type 3 this over engineered piece of shit right here <laughs> just totally ridiculous you can see where it cracked cracked all the way around and then over here it uh, it's separated so there's two splits going on what's causing is it's causing a kind of a Z pattern in here and in, the transmission can pull on this and it's causing everything just to stretch and sway and move and that's what was making my shifter bang around because it was pulling on the uh the shifter rod every time it would move around or push or pull it was just causing the shifter just to do this kind of crap i'm gonna go ahead and clean up my mess i got something else to move on to today damn tire on the z this one here keeps going flat put a damn plug in it months ago Seems like it's always that tire and this car goes flat. Months ago I put a plug in it. Months before that I replaced it. There's always something wrong with that side. Okay, in here somewhere is my wheel key. I'll be damned. Usually I keep it in the trunk, but I remember I stuck it in the center console this time around. Go ahead, roll backwards into my Dodge, you fuck. <laughs> I've got all the nuts out. But the wheel is stuck. <laughs> Can't say I've ever seen a wheel stick to the car before like that. That was just unusual. All right. Let's find out where our leaker is at. Aha. Uh -huh. There it is. It looks like it was something new. And not what I fixed. I hope that's not that big. That might be a trouble to plug. Now this damn wheel, it's always the driver's side, left side. I always get flats there. I think I've only ever had the uh, right side in the back go flat once. And the fronts I've never had a problem with. Well, anyway, it looks like, just from visual inspection, that that is my leak and probably the only leak. But we're going to find out. We're going to pull that, see if it pisses out, patch it, throw it in the duck's pool, and see if we get some bubbles. 
That's going to be loud. That's yeah, not so bad. A blunt ended bolt. And not even sharp. How the hell? It's really lightweight, too. I think it's aluminum. Let's see, we got a magnet over here somewhere. Well, it is magnetic, but barely. A blunt ended bolt. It probably was some kind of Allen key bolt, and I guess the head wore off and peened itself into the shape that you see. That's uh, that's really weird. Okay, we know what we need to fix. Let's go ahead and grab the tools. There's a tool for every trade. And as a judge used as an analogy, when he gave me my honorary doctorates, yes, that's true, the judge said to me, and to the state attorney, that if the guy has had experience changing plugs and tires, and he's got no formal school training for it, but he's done it for 20 years, would you call him an expert? And the state attorney said, well, yeah, of course. He said, well, this guy has been working on the computers and has seen these things for 20 years, many years longer than your man has. Why would you feel that he's not an expert? Well, I just think he's not trained. He, he never went to school for this stuff. And well, the judge more or less told the state attorney, you know, just shut up. <laughs> Enough. And uh, he ruled that I was an honorary expert at that point and gave me my way. And I was able to work as an expert witness for the First Circuit Court of Florida for computer crimes. And that was only one, only one of two civilians that were certified by a judge in the state of Florida at that time. There may be more, but at that time, that was only one of two. Anyway, we lost the case, and it was, uh, <laughs> I was working for the PDO's office, and, and the guy in particular was, uh, was a pedo, and he was guilty as fuck. You could tell just by looking at him. First time I met him, I knew there was something wrong with him. And they wouldn't give me his background, but apparently he had priors as well. So had I have known that, I never would have trusted the guy. All right, it's in. Pull. All right, not too bad. That's just the pebble. That looks rusted. Maybe we should have a closer look at that. Probably also just a pebble, but nope. Wow, we got two holes in the damn tire. Unbelievable. I wonder where I'm picking all this shit up at. And it's always this one tire. I don't understand. It's always the one. Ow, right in the balls. Oh my god, look at that. Alright, well we're gonna let the air <laughs> leak into that sucker. And we'll patch that up too. Very awkward angle. I can't say I've ever had anything stuck in my tire like that before. Usually shit goes straight in. There's a fool for every job. <laughs> no, the ducky pool isn't deep enough to submerge the whole tire, but it will submerge one side. Once I've got that figured out, if it's leaking or not, I flip it over, get the other side. The plug's not leaking here. Let's see if the other plug is leaking. The other plug is on the other side. Yep. That one's not leaking either. I sure picked up a lot of pine needles and shit on it, but no, no bubbles. All right, I'm gonna give this tire a clean bill of health. Back on the car she goes. Don't need a duck swimming in that shit. Lugs are good and tight. Now we'll go ahead and take it for a ride. Yeah. Gotta make the pool for the duckies. Whoa. Come on. We're going out. Let's go. Come on, Boomer. Go. Now, why are you stopping? Go. 
Go, 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 go. Yeah, I know the door's closed. When you get up there, I'll open it. Come on. Look. Go. 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 What the hell's the matter with you? Go. Yeah. I'm going to pool. Go through the messy ass backyard. Daddy's got way too much junk back here. Yeah. Look. You ready? I'll go in there. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Where's your brother? Come on, Boomer. Go in the pool. You're dirtier than Skeeter is. Go. Get. Go. In the pool. In the pool. In the pool. Come on. Good boy. Skeeter, don't squawk at him. He didn't do nothing to you. Two children, I'll tell you what. She squawks at him to get him in trouble. He hasn't had, even done anything wrong. Sometimes he does, but this time, obviously, he hasn't. Be good, ducks. Both of you. I've got me a sandwich! Let's see what we've got here. Oh, looks like it was already delivered. Let's go see if we can find it outside. In here, we should have two more rear mounts. And yes, I already had two, but I did order two more. And the reason for that is because the oval needs two also. This is the front transmission mount. God, it stinks. Woo! Wow, that smells really bad. It's also hard as a rock. Not very rubbery. I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out if that's really good or not. <laughs> Split up fastback part that broke. Here's a rotten beetle one. And here's the replacement beetle one that we're going to be putting we're putting on the uh, fastback. And you notice right away, these two parts don't look the same. They don't look the same at all. But they do have the same bolting configuration. You see the bolts that go right through there. I will have to uh, gently, with a Dremel, slot those holes out because the holes are a little closer together on the uh, fastback. But I've got an adapter piece that we've made. And I'll go over this just like this. Yeah. Just like that. And then these two pieces, well, it will be two pieces. I have to cut it in the middle. I'll weld it to here, weld it to here. And then we'll bolt this in there and it'll all sandwich together. And for starters, we'll get it drilled and cut. And then we'll pull out the, uh, I guess I'll sandblast the rust out of here. And then pull out the welder. I weld this sucker all together and uh, we'll put it together. If I get lucky and I don't get busy with work today, I might actually be able to install the thing and get the car together and running. That might be just amazing if that happens, but we'll try. We doing boom. Why are you over here? Why are you over here, huh? Why are you bothering me? Why are you bothering me? Why are you, bo why are you biting me? <laughs> Ow, fucker. <laughs> Ow, fucker. Well, you hurt me, I hurt you. You be nice. Come here. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. <laughs> you gonna come get me, huh? You gonna get me? You gonna get me? You gonna get me? Am I gonna get you? You gonna get me? All right, bye. All right, there, real quickly, I've got this assembled. I'm using the old transmission mount on purpose because it has the studs on it and allowed me to get all these pieces aligned. So now all I have to do is weld around these gaps that are here on the bottom. And then once it cools, disassemble it and it's ready to go on the car. Well, there it is, my custom made front transmission mount. It's made from a, uh, a beetle receiver right here. It's got a beetle nose cone mount, and of course the transmissions are the same as they are in the beetle. The difference was all these mounting points. Um, what I didn't put into consideration was the beetle rubber is actually a little bit shorter than the one that's on the fastback originally. So I ended up having to build another spacer, and temporarily I put a stack of washers in here, but I'll keep an eye on this and see how this all works out anyway. But uh, if needs be, I will make new spacers here or perhaps remanufacture this with longer parts. But because I don't care, I think this is going to be just fine. 
All right, I've got the engine back in. Um, it was a little bit of a hump because the car is on a, an angle. I've got it sloped upwards so much, you have to then lift up the motor and knock it cattywampus in order to push it in there. But those two top nuts um, are really easy to get to on a Type 3. The bolt on that side, I actually reversed it so the nut's available to me from the engine compartment. It is a bitch to try to get to that nut from the reverse side where the clutch cable is at. So I don't, I don't do that. That's just a really lousy design on Volkswagen's part. <laughs> I've got to snug up a few things in here. I've got some uh, loose tin. Apparently missing a screw. I have to figure out what happened to that. Put something in place to hold it down. I also have to put in my rubber bellows. But we're almost to the part we can uh, start it up. Here we go. Generator and oil lights. Make sure we're not in gear. Actually, the shifter feels really good. That thing was really sloppy before. Wow, I can actually feel where the gears are. This is amazing. That's good. That is really good. Let's go ahead and see if it starts. Well, that's good. Both the sensors went out like they're supposed to. It's a little cold yet. It's a warm day today, though. It's uh, nearly 70. It's one of the reasons why I started up so easy, which uh, I'm happy with. Well, that's good. Just gonna go over it once more and make sure all the connections are tight. And if everything is good on there, uh, we're gonna take it for a ride. Let it warm up a little bit. I messed with some of the wires and it appears to be running okay now. I think uh, it was a loose connection somewhere in the engine compartment. As you can see that wing nut is way down inside of there that's for the clutch adjustment but from the type 3 engine compartment if you move that tin forward you can actually get to it but to get my hand in there is kind of difficult and sometimes you just can't get the right leverage on it without as I've discovered breaking the wings off of that wing nut for the clutch adjustment so I made this socket some years ago it's got slots in it and it fits over that wing nut and with a couple of extensions or a really long extension if I had a long one, but you know, not every guy has a long one. Um, I can put that on that wing nut and then with the ratchet, crank it very easily without having to take the wheel off or jack the car up or any other nonsense. So this has worked out really, really nicely for me over the years. I don't know how many turns we're gonna need. It's about a turn and a half. Let's see how much play we've got. It needs a little more. Oh my god, that makes it so much easier. Alright, here we go again. Now the throttles sound like carburetors sound like they're out of sync. And that's probably for true because when that linkage got bent. Bet you it screwed it up. Something else for me to work on then.
much wing nut, I might have leaned against the uh, left side carburetor linkage and I may have bent that a little bit and that might have been what pulled the entire um, pivot tree over. Otherwise, seems good. Handles tighter than it used to. The swing axle uh, suspension is, is very dependent on having that transmission in a fixed location. Because each rear wheel is mounted to a spring plate, which is flexible. So if the transmission's moving, the entire rear end is doing whatever the hell it wants. And it might only be a little bit, you know, a few millimeters on each side, or in my case, with how badly torn the front uh, thing was, it, it could have been moving as much as half an inch. And that will greatly affect your handling and greatly affect your um, performance. Now that 
they're fixed. Well, as fixed as they're supposed to be for a swing axle anyway. Um, maybe I'll get a little oversteer out of it. Nope, that was still a ton of understeer there. <laughs> I even let off the throttle, and that's one of the things that you do when you want a Volkswagen to oversteer is get into a turn and let go of that gas, and that rear end will come sliding around. Get back on the gas, and you can get it straight again. But no, this time it's still understeered. It's just a symptom of this car. It might just need some better tires to it. But... What's happening? What kind of snake? A drain? I think so. Let me look for it. All right, no problem. I'll be working on this. All right, we'll see you soon. Like Keith the neighbor needs my sewer snake. Wonder if I uh, wonder if I can find it. Don't need you guys knowing my combination. <laughs> One of you suckers might come in my garage and start stealing my my gold, like my oval my oval gold. I thought the snake that I had might be in this area over here. Ah, there it is. It actually is in this area. Imagine that. And here it is. Wow. That's even more than my ex did to me. Wow. That's why she doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of her flooding my house. And setting it on fire, but that was another story too. I tried to have a sense of humor though. I told her I'd flood the house until after you've already had it on fire. <laughs> I thought it was gonna go. It looks awfully dry in there. I'd say it's flowing. No, no water yet. Keep pushing that thing down. Put that handle on there. Closer to the pipe. Push it on down. Closer to the pipe. Close it. Close the handle and twist. Oh. And continue to push in as you twist because you probably just hit whatever is blocking. Now you probably want to throw some water in there so you can get the push down. All right, what I'll do is I'll, uh, and you got that thing in a wet button to get it wet. Yeah, I'll wind it back up right now. I think you have some water in there. That's probably not enough flow though. I got any more than that. Yeah, you probably hit the clog already. Now it's just a matter of making sure it goes down. You know how ladies are, they'll flush anything. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. You remember that? It was about 10 years ago. Yeah, and just before we took this cruise, because my, my daughter just got married. Uh huh. And we just got back, and they came in and put two new toys in here. So no flush and shit, she just come back. She just fogged the toilet up. <laughs> just came back and it happened again. And I didn't know who was doing it all along. <laughs> yeah, I had that happen here too. My uh, ex, before she was even my girlfriend, came here with two of her friends and they stayed. Three girls in the house ruined my plumbing. What? It just That's why I dug up my front yard and replaced my pipe. They clogged so much stuff in there, the plumber could hardly even get it free. I think I would start with ECUA, have them flush out at the end, and uh, if that still doesn't get it, then you be calling a professional. Yeah, we're gonna call one in the morning. But you can keep beating that up and see what happens, but uh, I don't want it back until it's cleaned and dry. <laughs> so you hang it up somewhere if you can, and uh, will, just let me know when it's done. I'll put it in the backyard. That's fine. All right, and I'll wrap it up. That's fine. Well, you don't have to wrap it up. It's okay if it gets rained on even. It's supposed to get wet. Okay. <laughs> just make sure it's clean and dry. I will, I appreciate it. No problem, but you just might get it. Yeah, I'm going to continue to go for it for a few. Yeah, you can see the puddle down at the bottom there, so yeah. just keep beating at it. You might want to turn it 180 degrees and then try pushing it in again and 180 degrees and push, but that's how I got a little more of the snake in there. But I think you're hitting the end of the line right now. I think right now you're at the street. Throttle responses. 
much quicker than before. I don't hear that sputtering that I was getting. Right where I left them. <laughs> 